How's everybody doing today? Awesome. Yeah? Is that Adriano? Hey, buddy. Hey, hey. Listen, you, you know if we're starting a new sermon series and I'm coming up here with a balloon, okay? You better at least say you're doing well. <laughs> you better. I have never started a new sermon series with a balloon, but there's a first for everything. We are in this new series called Smile, and we're taking a look at the art of what it means to actually be happy. Like, we're going to study happiness for four weeks, and I'm super, super pumped about that, because like, if, if you're like me, that's going to be something that's near and dear to your heart, and it's something you would probably want to get better at, um, just knowing the human condition, and maybe it's even something you want to invite your friends to, if they haven't kind of checked out the church scene for a while, uh, that's what we're going to be doing, so uh, we're, we're super excited about that. I don't know what to do with this balloon right now, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let it go. Let's see what happens, okay? I don't know, I, that, that could be in the bad idea box. And there it is, right there. Okay, so if, if I get super boring, just remember to look up and that will, that will guide you to our topic today. It's gonna be right up there and it might be moving throughout the whole auditorium right now. Uh, that's an unplanned divine prop. So thank you, thank you Lord for that. Hey, this Saturday, it's going to be awesome. Uh, Love Del Rey is coming. It's our opportunity to get involved in the city and do some cool things. Uh, we're going to be meeting at Trinity to kick it off with some breakfast, gather and pray with a couple of other um, local churches. And then we're going to be heading out to, I think it's four different spots in the city um, to do some like uh, cleaning, painting, um, all sorts of like beautification work. And so we're really excited to be able to do that with the Capital C uh, Church. It's going to be awesome and we want you to be a part of it, but you have to sign up, okay? I mean, you could probably come and we, we fit you in somewhere, but we actually have sign-ups for each of these different things that we're going to be doing and you'll pick the, the, uh, like the job that you want to do. Um, so make sure you sign up. It's on our website. It's, it's called Love Del Rey. Uh, you can probably go there on our app as well and, uh, and, and get signed up. So we're, we're really excited um, about that. Hey, if you're watching online this morning, hello, thank you, we love you, our online. Can we give it up for our online community? Just like show us some love. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, so um, here's, here's what we're going to do today. Today we're kicking off this series, and it's all about happiness. And uh, like I said, we're going to spend four weeks kind of looking at different aspects of this particular topic. Today, man, is all about God. It's the study of God. We're actually in, we're calling it the, uh, like the theology of happiness. You know, because if God's not happy, then you know we're, we're probably kind of maybe wasting our time here with this. And we got a few songs to kind of kick us off, get our minds reoriented. Um, I don't know what song you think of when I say the word happy. Maybe it's this one. Don't worry. Be happy. Every night we have some trouble. Okay, okay. Or maybe it's this one. Or maybe it's this one. It might seem crazy, but I'm about to say. Sometimes she's here, you can take away. get on the stool and watch y'all watch y'all do it. <laughs> you know it's it's super cool and really um, appropriate when you come into the house of the Lord to be happy. When you're with God's people to be happy. When you're opening up the word of God to be happy. Those are all really appropriate things. Um, what we're going to do today is, is take a look at what some people kind of throughout history have said about that, and then we're going to, like, the main portion of what we're going to do is, is take a look at what the Bible has to say about our God. Is he happy or is he not? Because what you think about that actually changes everything. 
A.W. Tozer writes, like, what a person, what comes to mind when a person thinks about God is the most important thing about them. So when I say, uh, the person of God, what comes to mind? If I were to say, hey, the, the uh, expression of, on God's face right now, what comes to mind? Like, like, God's disposition to you, to the world, what comes to mind? Those are, those are super important things uh, because they actually shape how you live and how you interact and, and kind of what's, uh, what's going on in, in your heart and your mind. So just kind of throughout the centuries, I got a few quotes that kind of get us thinking about this idea of happiness. Augustine from the fourth century, one of the church fathers writes this, um, every man whatsoever his condition desires to be happy. I love that. Like happiness is actually the thing, the one thing that unites us. Politics does not. Sports does not. Religion does not. There's nobody who votes to be unhappy most of the time. There's nobody like lobbying, picketing, like rallying a campaign of unhappiness. Most people can come together on the fact like, yeah, man, like being happy is awesome, and, and I'd like to learn how to be a bit, uh, like even more happy. Uh, from the 17th century, kind of moving down the history, uh, scope this guy named William Bates said, the most essential and active desire in human nature is to happiness. Like it's, it's one of the, it's, can I get that next, there it is. It's the most essential and active desire. It's like part of you being human, is this natural and active desire to be happy. What's cool about that is as those of us who follow Jesus and know that like that's where true happiness is like exploded, what's awesome about that truth is that happiness, even sometimes before Jesus, connects with everyone. It's like this amazing bridge that we get to walk across and help people get introduced to the source and fountain of happiness, especially as believers. Moving on to the 19th century, we go to a guy named Charles Spurgeon. He's known as the Prince of Preachers. He says, my dear brothers and sisters, if anyone in the world ought to be happy, we are the people. We are the people. Like, we should have the, the, the market on happiness. Like, when it comes to happiness, people should be like, oh yeah, that group's happy, that group's happy. But this crew, this crew that calls themselves Jesus followers, man, there's something radically happy about them. Like, their hearts are always glad. It doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what they face. No matter what life throws at them, they have this like relentless gladness of the heart. And I don't understand it. Spurgeon said this because of the promises that are ours in Christ. We are the people. And so, you know, we thought, man, let's, let's just kick off a summer study and, and do a little bit of study on this, this idea of happiness. And then kind of even bring it a pretty current, the 21st century. You may or may know this. Um, you might not think of him as a theologian, uh, but he, he has a pretty good perspective on life. His name's Jim Gaffigan. Anybody familiar with Jim Gaffigan? Okay. Uh, so Jim Gaffigan, he goes really deep on things like Hot Pockets, Disney World, all, all those sort of things. He's actually a comedian, if, if, you, don't, if you don't know who he is. Uh, if, if this goes off the rails and you're like, man, I'm not really following him, I can't find the balloon, you can Google Jim Gaffigan and he'll, get, he'll like put in Hot Pockets and for like two or three minutes, you'll, you'll be happy again. <laughs> you kind of have that restored, like, oh, that guy's, that guy's hilarious. And then maybe it'll give you, the, give you the opportunity to check back in. Here's what he says about being happy. Being happy is really the definition of success, isn't it? Being happy. Hey, let's talk a little bit about this, this idea of, of happiness, uh, because so, I think sometimes we can, we can mix it up with like, okay, so as Christians, we're not supposed to be happy, we're supposed to be joyful. Let me, let me just clear the air for you, talk about a couple of things that we're going to be using during this series, uh, sort of tools of the trade. One of them is this book called Happiness by Randy Alcorn. It's, it's probably like the premier work on what it means to be happy as a follower of Jesus. And it is just like saturated with scripture and the gospel. 
Um, if, you want to, if you want to do a little bit of a deeper dive on this, grab this book, listen to it on audio, whatever the case may be. He, he goes into great detail, um, something I'm going to handle in about 60 seconds. And here's what he says. When you look at the scriptures and you really do your work to try to um, divide the meanings of things like joy, happy, rejoicing, glad of heart, like, like they all basically mean the same thing. We're, we're talking about the same concept. This, this idea that because of who God is and who we can be in Christ, like our hearts can be made happy the way that we actually desire them to be. So when I'm talking about happiness, I'm not talking about the fleeting stuff that kind of comes and goes. I'm not talking about just an emotion, although happiness does have emotional qualities. I'm talking about a posture of the heart, a way of life, a lifestyle, if you will, because of who God is and who he calls us to be. So let's not be semantic and split hairs over this or that. He also has, does this work, he, actually when he was doing, writing this book, which, which much of this series um, is influenced by, he said he had a lot of feedback from people who, who were like, man, if you focus so much on happiness, it's like you're gonna be compromising holiness. Almost like, almost like you're defaming the holiness of God by talking about this idea of happiness. But what we see in the scriptures is a God that says, as one increases, so too does the other. And it seems as though maybe your church experience has been weighted way over here, that's been all about holiness, 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 to the extent and maybe even exclusion of happiness. And I would say that's been a, that's been a disservice to you. Because you really shouldn't. I don't know if you can, but you should, at least shouldn't be able to experience one without the other. Let's pray and let's hop into to see kind of what, what the Lord has to say to us today about this. Father, we're asking that you would indeed fill us with your spirit, that you would capture our hearts, God, that we would see you for who you are. Lord, that we would have um, just an encounter with you. We ask that we, we, we would be able to, from your word, from your truth revealed, have a much more rich understanding of your personhood and how that affects us today. Help us in these things, Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So if you have your Bibles, you're probably not going to be able to keep up. I'm just saying that right now. It's cool that you brought them. It's super cool that you brought them. But you might not, I don't want to say you're not going to need them. You're going to need them later. Because what I did is I gave you a ton of homework. It's in your outline. You're going to see all the scriptures that are referenced here. Uh, well, I think at least most of them. There's like 12, 13 of them. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to go this week and spend time reading these and just seeing how the Lord speaks to you in all of them. So what I'm going to do, though, because there's so many, is they're going to be up on the screen here. And we're going to, uh, we're going to work through them together. But what we're going to do is we're going to get a theology of happiness. A theology of happiness. Um, many of you might be familiar with uh, Eric Little. Have you ever heard that name? Eric Little. Chariots of Fire. Okay. We don't have that music, but if you, you know it, it's playing in your head right now, right? Dun, 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 dun. He's this runner, right? And, and he has this sister who's a missionary, and they both are, are really in love with Jesus. And there's this amazing scene. And in this scene, they're having a, a bit of a debate or a bit of an argument. And, and his sister, whose name's Jenny, is like, you've got to quit your Olympic dream of running and racing, and you've got to come and, and join us on the mission field. This is what God wants for you. And Eric's like, actually, no. You know what God wants for me? He wants me to run. Because God, God made me fast. And when I run, I feel his pleasure. It's this completely different view of the same God. One of these people is all about like the seriousness and the reverence and the holiness. The other has, I believe, a bit of a more full and robust picture of this God who doesn't diminish the holiness and the reverence of the supreme being, but also recognizes 
that there's a great happiness and delight in that God that can be expressed and experienced even today. It really matters kind of what you think, and so let's hopefully um, set some perspective for you guys, and, uh, and we're, and we're going to walk through these. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move, move to my station over here, and uh, we're, I'm going to use this screen. Uh, these will all be behind me uh, as well, so you'll, you'll be able to, to, to see them. And there's a lot, right? Okay, so there's a lot. So here's what I decided to do, because, uh, you know, we, we've probably never done this many scriptures in one particular time. We usually do a deep dive in one or two, right? So this is more of like a survey. We're getting, a, we're getting the, the survey of the land, the base theology. So what I'm going to do is, I'm, I, I brought these, uh, see these, these, little, these little guys right here? These, these are like little smiley faces. It's, it's similar to the one that I have here. And so what I'm going to do is, I'm just, just, just to make sure that you're still with me and stuff like that, I'm just going to randomly help you with these. <laughs> It's for your good, it's totally for your good, it's because I love you, it's because I'm super happy. And, and if it hits you, that means that, you know, um, it, maybe it's a divine sign that you, A, you weren't paying attention, I don't know that for sure, I'm just saying maybe. Or B, maybe um, you, you, you're getting, it's, it's a stress reliever, you know, so you can do that during the, or, or maybe it just means that you should give this to somebody else this week and just be like, hey, thanks for making me so happy. And I encourage them, okay? But, but hopefully it'll also kind of keep you with us just in case you get lost in the midst of so many scriptures. All right, here we go. Here we go. First one, Psalm 16. What does it say? In your presence, this is, this is the psalmist talking about God. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. We could just stop right there, right? We don't, we don't need the, the next 11. We, we can actually just camp out. I'm going to give you the next one. But, but we can just camp out there. In your presence, God, in your presence, there is fullness of joy. Like, there's no lack of joy when you get around God. It's as though um, he's like the grandfather of happiness. He's the boss. He, he's, got the, he's got, like, the corner on it. When you get around God, he's never lacking in happiness, gladness of heart. God owns it and is never in need of any more fullness of joy. Have you ever been around somebody like that? Like, you, like you're not super happy, but, but when you get around this person, it's like you get happier just by being with them. Can you just slip up your hand if, you, if you've got a person that comes to mind like that? Okay, awesome. Some names that you might know here at this church that just kind of come, that just rise to the top. Uh, you know, I, I think of my mom, Becky Cliff. She's the greeter out there. She's the one who's like, you know, like in a loving way assaulting you when you come in with a hug or say, hey, what's up? We're glad you're here. Um, Abby Kinley, another like happy creature. Like party of one, man. Just roaming around, full of happiness, ready to make you happy. I think of uh, like Brady and Lauren Witt. Have you guys met these people? These are the people that run our, our welcome, like, yeah, let's give them a hand. That's awesome. These people are like, just, just, uh, I don't, I don't know, like, like, uh, you, what are those things you call when you peel back the head and then a thing pops out? What's that called? Pez. Pez. Those two are like Pez dispensers of joy. Is that, hey, what's up, right? And he's like, oh man, I feel better. Why? I don't know. I just was hanging out with Lauren and just, I just walked by her and she like looked smiling and I was like, thank you. That's, so you probably have some people like that. But it, be, why? Because it's like in there, in, in who they are, it's so saturated with something, we're going to call it joy and happiness because that's what it is, that when you get around them, it affects you. At your, at your hand, there are pleasures forevermore. This is God, right? So some theology. I want to introduce you to the God you've never met. I'll say that again. I want to introduce you to the God you've never met. Now, now some of you have met this guy. But I'm, I'm assuming that probably there's, there's quite a few of us in here today who've never met this guy. And I want to take our time as we, as we walk through uh, some of these. It's interesting. At his hand, there are pleasures forevermore. So this is a God who is like incredibly happy and full of pleasure. Pleasure 
is like an awesome thing to God. Pleasure is not something that God hides from, tells us to have less of, tells us to like, oh, you know, okay, that's a bit too much, too much pleasure for you today. You know, you need to kind of like keep that in balance. As a matter of fact, I think this is a God who would want us to increase our appetite for pleasure and actually get serious about where pleasure can be found. And he would just lovingly invite you away from those places that don't work, at least long term. And, uh, you know, this is a bit of speculation on my part, but, but at your hand, there are pleasures forevermore. I'm not sure if the psalmist met this or not, but as I was reading this verse, I was thinking, well, who is, if we think of the Father, who, who's at his right hand right now? Christ. So at the hand of the Father, there are pleasures forevermore. So maybe that means that our great treasure, our greatest pleasure, would be the person of Jesus Christ, at least according to the scriptures. Hey, let's go up the next one. Uh, we're still in the book of Psalms. You're going to see these in your outlines. There's some room for notes. If you just want to jot down a note or two as we're walking through this stuff um, that kind of pops out to you, that'd be awesome because you're going to be going back and reading this stuff uh, this week. I know you are. I totally know you are. I know you are. Because I know that, I'm going to get one of those going. I'm right there. Oh! You <laughs> said that? That hit you right in the hand? I can't pretend that we didn't see that, okay? So we, we, it's okay, it's totally okay. We're still happy, I hope your happiness has not been compromised by that. Psalm 21, six says, talking about God, you make me happy with the joy of your presence. You make me happy with the joy of your presence. Now, depending on what um, uh, translation you have, ESV, NIV, these are actually all different translations. So it might not read exactly the same because th these, these are just taken from different translations, um, you know, as you work through your scriptures. But, but uh, here, here's, this is, this is the essence. This is, this is what the verse is communicating. Although it comes from different translations, as I talked about. You make me happy. The joy of your presence. Well, how could God give you something that he doesn't have himself? Right? That's, that's, that doesn't work that way. But if God is full of the very thing that he's given you, well, then it must be really true that, that this is a happy God. This is a happy God. I have uh, many people who live in my home now. And uh, we went from the... Uh, uh, you know, family of four to a family of six, and well, we still have the same dog, but she has a huge growth on her side now, so it seems like there's two of her. So it just seems like my house is completely flooded with individuals, and no, none of the individuals right now hate me. Not, my 16-year-old daughter, cool, 12-year-old son, cool, three-year-old son, cool, wife, cool, awesome, um, great. It's a, so I come home, it's usually a great thing. But, but I do have this two-year-old daughter, and this two-year-old daughter, um, it's as if she was waiting her whole life for me when I come home. I'm talking about every time. I mean, when she sees me, it, it, it's, like, it's like my presence makes her happy somehow, but what she doesn't realize is that it's her presence that makes me happy. We even named her Cora Joy because this verse is so true of her. There's like something inside this little girl that just explodes when you get around her and it does something to you. You make me happy with the joy of your presence. That's what God does for us. Next one, Psalm 36. You give them drink from the river of your delights. Anybody have a pool? Pool? Anybody live in a place that's got a pool? Okay. It's kind of like us. I got a pool. Just gotta walk like a quarter mile to get to it, but I got a pool. Um, any of you live kind of near the ocean? Okay, some of you? Awesome. None of you have a river of delights. I know that for sure. I know that for sure. My mom serves as, a, as an agent selling real estate. It would be an awesome um, thing for her to be able to market a house that's like, not, is it on the intercoastal? No, is it, is it uh, does it pool? No. Um, no, it's, it's right next to the River of Delights. That's, um, so it's a good asking price. You probably want to get in early. Uh, you give them drink from the river of your delights. Like, God has this river of delights that's just like flowing out. Now, if you know anything about a river, it's not nasty lake water. Rivers flow out. They are outward facing and going. This is one that never runs dry. 
Do we serve a happy God? Well, if he has a river of delight that defines who he is, that is going out for the good of humanity, I would say it's a pretty safe theological reason to be like, yeah, we serve a very happy God. Next one. I think we go into Zephaniah here. Uh, Zephaniah is one of the prophets, and, and you know, um, I don't know how much you know about prophets. Sometimes they're happy, sometimes they're, they're bringing like some heavy news. This is what he says about um, this is what he says about God. It, a couple of verses earlier, which I gave you in your outline, um, it tells the people to do a similar thing because of God. But then it says that God's going to do like the same thing back to them. It says that He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing. So just like, it's cool to read scripture simply. We don't have to, you don't have to know uh, like Aramaic or Hebrew or Greek. Just, just read it. So what does it say here? It says here, that if, if there's going to be somebody who is rejoicing with gladness, they're probably going to be what? Let's try that again. Oh, you know what? As a matter of fact, this is what you guys get for that. Right there. Listen. That's nobody's fault, Mom. I did it as a bad throw. We'll work on that later. If somebody is going to be rejoicing with gladness, they're probably pretty happy. Oh, you guys are so good. You can throw them at me now. If, I, if, if you guys get it like that, you can, you can hit me with them. They're probably going to be pretty happy. Most of you... Most of you, when you were spending time rejoicing with gladness over something, were probably pretty amped about it, correct? You were probably pretty stoked about it. It could have been the Capitals. For my hockey fans. Take care of you again. It, 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 it could have been the Warriors. It could be the Dolphins' first round draft. Who, who knows, okay? It could be a lot. But most of the times when you think about, man, you're like rejoicing with gladness. You got a rate. Like something awesome happened. You're probably experiencing some happiness. So, so this, is, this is God. This is like the state of God. We're going to talk about some implications of what we learn about God's happiness, but let's just kind of do the survey here first, because this is, this is important. He will quiet you by his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. Same thing, simple reading. If I were to say, I'm exulting with loud singing, that's usually not in a space where I'm incredibly down and depressed. I'm probably filled with some sort of happiness. And what's cool is that God does that over us. So a couple things we're learning so far, especially if you're taking notes. Um, God's happiness, for where we start is God's happiness actually centers on God. We're going to talk about who's, who's in that community here in just a minute. But then God's happiness also includes us. I was, I was just so encouraged this morning just to, just to like hear the Lord as I was reading through these and meditating through these. Like, like I'm part of God's happiness. Like God's happy over me. It's really cool. It's really cool that, that I'm, I'm a part of that. Next one, please. Um, we go over here to Jeremiah. Um, I will rejoice, talking about God, in doing them good. How often do you think God does us good? <laughs> All the time. All the time. All the time. So I wonder how often he rejoices in his happy. I mean, if we're just doing simple math right now, and we're just reading it for like, face value, we don't need to like do a deep dive into all the... Like, the I will rejoice in doing them good. If we know that God does us good all the time, then we know that he is in a constant state of rejoicing because he's doing what makes him happy. Also interesting to find out about God's happiness, it's active. It's like an active component to it. It's not just sedentary. It's, it, there's, there's like some motion uh, to it. I love this because this is super simple because we've got a happy God and, and his, his uh, happiness is active, but, but we're also included in this one as well. We're, we're the them, essentially. Let's go to the next one. Um, Isaiah 65, another prophet, says this. Uh, this, is, this is about God. I will rejoice and be glad in my people. Again, simple reading. What's one of the things that, that adds to God's happiness? Right here. My, I'm getting this one. My people. My people. 
That's cool. But we know that, that God is rejoicing. We know that he's glad. We know that he's happy. He has maybe a different posture than you're used to. No more shall be the sound of weeping. What I love about this particular passage is that um, it's talking about not only a happy God, but also the end. Where, where, where do we end and really begin? Like our ending, which is actually our new beginning in, in when God recreates everything, come, Jesus is coming back and he's going to make all things new and right and beautiful. When that happens, for those of us in Christ, our end is complete happiness. So the more we pursue happiness now, the more we show the world actually what's coming. It's really simple. It's really, if you want to grow in your evangelism, if you want to love people well and, and share Christ with them in a meaningful way that they are already interested in, pursue getting happier. Period. We're going to talk about how. Because I would imagine, like me, we stumble through the how and it doesn't really work or stick. But the principle, and that's our end, that's what's coming. So the more we live like that, the more we tell the world of what God is doing right now and going to do when he comes back. A um, couple of things that hopefully you've just kind of noted um, as we walk through the Old Testament survey. We've got some New Testament stuff that we're going to look at here in just a second. But um, oh, this, this guy named Brent Strong, Old Testament professor, says this. In the Bible, God is happy, and God's happiness affects and infects the rest of the non-God world, humans included. Isn't that awesome? So, so don't take it from me. This is a, you, you don't know who I am. Like, as far as you know, if you're new here, I'm like this guy who's like, I came up with a balloon, right? And now, now I'm throwing happy balls. That's just, you, you might not. I don't know what this guy's about, but I'm not sure he actually understands the scriptures. That's totally, that's totally legit. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to... I'm getting warmed up. Just, I just want you to know. I'm getting warmed up. And I told... There was a challenge that was laid out before service that I could throw one into the sound booth. So I don't know if that's going to happen or not. But there will be an attempt at some point today. You might be like, I, man, I'm not sure about this guy. He, maybe he's bending the scriptures to like make a point. Man, first of all, that's a lot of scriptures to be bent. Correct? Secondly, we're just trying to bring in some other sources and say, hey, like, this is the plain case. That the, there's a theology behind God. And it's really clear God is a lot of different things, but one of the things God is is happy. And that's really important for you to understand because as Brett says, um, in the Bible, God's happy. God's happiness affects and infects like everything else around it. It's actually his desire. God's actually way more concerned about your happiness than you are. Joining him in that journey, man, is like, it's like the best thing you can do. So, so what, is the, what does the New Testament say here about, um, about happiness and, and what God's kind of doing? Uh, we're just going to walk through a couple here in the Gospels and then in uh, some, of the, some of the letters. Uh, the first one's Matthew uh, chapter 3. Um, here we have the Father speaking about the Son, and the Holy Spirit is actually present. Um, and this is uh, Jesus' baptism. He gets baptized and says that the Holy Spirit came down like a dove, and then the Father speaks, and the Son, God the Son, who's Jesus, he's there. This is what the Father says. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. In whom I am well pleased. So the Father is crazy happy, well pleased. Over who? The Son. The Son. So here's what we're beginning to see here in this particular picture, just in this one section of Scripture, is there is the Father who's like overjoyed. His heart is made happy because of the Son. And then as you learn about the life of Jesus, you're going to see that like Jesus' happiest moments, like what brings Jesus the greatest joy is actually simply doing what the Father tells him to do, which he does all the time, which definitely makes Jesus super, super what? That's right. That's right. You guys are getting good. That's going to be the word. Four weeks. Just say it, and you won't get anything thrown at you. 
So we've got the father being incredibly like happy with the son, well pleased. We've got the son being incredibly happy with the father. And we're going to see here in just a minute that the spirit comes in and actually um, makes Jesus filled with joy. So we have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And what happens is we see in the scripture, they all exist together, but they all exist completely happy with one another. This is the first and foremost place of happiness in all of creation. It's where we started. Remember, in your presence, there is fullness of joy. Well, who is in the presence of God? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Fullness of joy, fullness of happiness. This is the community of happiness. And we begin to learn that happiness always happens best in community. Happiness always happens best in community. It's not a solo affair. We also begin to learn about God's happiness, that it is completely sufficient and lacking in nothing. Although we are invited into his happiness, and although we are a part of his happiness, God does not need us to be happy. He is fully and completely happy without us in his own being, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But because of that happiness, he desires to share it with those he loves. That's the gospel message. Have you ever experienced a moment that was so incredibly happy? And you're like, maybe it was a movie, maybe it's something you know, like a, um, something that happened at your work, maybe, maybe something happened with your kid. And, and what's, the, what's one of the first things you want to do? You're, enjo you're enjoying it, but you want to do what? Share. Dude, you want to share that. Share. You want to share that so bad. So much so that, I, and I find myself doing this too. I found myself doing this a little bit last night. I'll actually take myself out of the moment so I can do this. And I'll be like, oh yeah, keep looking at those fish. That's with my kids, right? So I keep looking, and I take the picture, and I'm like, oh yeah, I, I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually stepping out of my own happiness to, to, to like somehow share it with some other people who weren't there. I mean, why do you think social media is so prevalent? Because we have this innate desire when there's happiness going on within us, we're just created to share it. But where do you think we get that from? We're created in His image. And one thing that we can learn about God's happiness, and you can be putting the sort of pieces together for your own, is that we need, we need community for it to happen. Happiness in its fullness usually has an expression route. That's why there's a river of delight, not a lake of delight. Well, what else? Here in, in, in uh, the, the New Testament, go ahead, we'll throw up the next one. It comes from Luke. At that time, okay, so now we're going to see the, the Spirit kind of here, uh, even like mentioned in this particular moment of happiness. At that time, Jesus, full of joy through the Holy Spirit. Again, we see the community of God sustaining, maintaining happiness. Next one. Luke 15. At that time, um, oh, we got we to redo. We'll go on to the next one. Oh, Luke 25. Come and share your master's happiness. Come and share um, your master's happiness. Interesting. Uh, this, is a, this is a parable, right? And, and sort of like at the end of the parable, you're going to read it because you guys are going to, you'll read that portion and you'll be like, oh man, I wonder like what the full context was. And you'll go ahead and do that this week. I know you guys will. And so you're going to see that this was a parable. And at the, like at the end of the parable, there's this invitation. And, you know, parables are like simple stories that teach about uh, God. And at the end of the parable, you're, you're going to see one of the things that, that's like, hey, the, the master, like the person of God, he, he wants to share his happiness. It's not a happiness that he hoards. It's a happiness that he's dying, literally died to share with you. It's a shareable happiness. I love the one from, from Luke. Um, I don't think you're going to have it, but, but when you read it, you'll see it. In Luke 15, um, it's about the, the shepherd, and, and, he, and he goes out and he finds this, the lost sheep, and then this is his response. I am so happy 
I found my lost sheep. Let's come and celebrate. So happy. Like, God gets super amped when he finds his lost sheep. So one of the things that we can learn about God's happiness is that not only does it pertain to us, but it pertains to us who are far away who then come near. There's like this unique experience within the happiness of God when somebody who is far away from God is found and brought home. Galatians 5 says this, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, a whole list of others that you've all memorized and probably going on in your mind right now. If you went to Christian school, there's a song to it. You're singing it right now. We're just going to stop right there. We're just going to stop right there. But the fruit of the Spirit, so what that means is that like, um, what's natural to the Spirit, what belongs to the Spirit is this list. And when the Spirit comes to live within a believer, this list becomes now natural to that believer. The very first thing on the list is love. The, the, the Spirit of God is love. Awesome. Number two, the Spirit of God is joy. The second thing that shows and proves that you are actually a follower of Jesus Christ is a happy heart. Right after a loving heart. It's, it's, it goes along with this, it's fruit. So you know with fruit, what's also with fruit is that the fruit on a tree, it tells you what's in the tree. It tells you all about the tree. The second characteristic of your life as a Jesus follower should be joy, gladness of heart, a posture of happiness. What's awesome about our God is that he is a God who very much understands darkness, evil, and difficulty. As I talk about this happy God, this is not a happy God who is absent from school shootings. This is not a happy God that is absent from, from sex trafficking. This is not a happy God that is absent from your current situation that you walked in here with that has owned you for years. He's not absent from it. The proof of that is that he understood what it meant to watch his son be brutally beaten and nailed to a cross by evil people with evil intent. He then understood that to the same degree that those things that I mentioned, being wicked and evil and things like that, done by, by, by people who, who are, are wicked and evil, he understands those things more intimately than we can ever realize because the, my sin, your sin, put on Christ. It was like for a moment on the cross, Christ owned the wickedness of the world. And then God the Father, he crushed him like you want him to crush all those people responsible for those things. Crushed God the Son with the righteous justice that we long for when we see that out there. Jesus died. He's out, he's dead, he's gone. So he's buried. I mean, it's interesting. Randy Alcorn in his book here writes, maybe if there's one moment where happiness might be compromised within the Godhead, maybe it's that moment. He goes on to say, but because all of the parties involved in that moment knew the outcome, doesn't, doesn't buy that fully. Because on the third day, what you, what you may have heard, but never personalized, that your sin was put on Christ, that, that, that we're the ones that put him there, not just out there, but in here, and in here, and in here, and right here, that put Christ there just as much as out there. What you might not have realized about the resurrection is that when, when Jesus um, was brought back from the dead on the, on, on the third day, when he overcame sin and he overcame death, 
What that meant was the curse that we live under and that the world lives under even at this present moment, even though it still remains, there's fragments of the curse that still remain and drive us deep into areas of darkness, that curse has been broken. That that curse will not be our end. That that curse does not define who we are. And the happy God who understands your darkest valley has not only been there, but comes out on the other side and invites you to begin to experience some of the other side, even right now. Even right now, because you know the end. Because you know this God, filled with river of delights for people just like you and me. The question is, how do we get in on that? How do we get in on that gospel message? What does it mean to begin to experience the reverse of that, of that curse, if you will? The, the, the constraints of this world that we all live in right now, that's filled with darkness, that's filled with those things that do bring us down, that's not yet. How do we begin? How do we begin that journey? of experiencing more and more of that God and the happiness that he has for us. It's called faith and repentance. Here's what the scriptures say about that. If you want to get in on that river, if you want to get in on those delights, if you want to get in on that spirit, the Bible calls us to a place of surrender. That we would surrender our control, that we would surrender the ownership of our own life, and we'd say, and we'd say like, I'm, I'm, I can't do this. Like, that happiness that he's been talking about for like the last 25, 30 minutes, like, dude, that's not me. I can't, I can't get there, and I can't sustain it. I taste it a little bit. I can't, like, I don't know that type of God. If you want to get in on that, you've got to, this has got to be surrendered as it is currently, right where you are. And say, I'm done here. But I believe, God, because you, you beat the curse, because you've come out on the other side of wickedness and evil and darkness, and I believe that you did that for me, not just to forgive me, but to give me this same happiness that you enjoy. And I surrender this and myself to you. And I say, I believe it, I receive it, and I want it. That's what it means to come, begin to taste some of these things that this God of happiness has for people like you and me. Man, as we kind of come to a conclusion on our survey here today, uh, we, we've got, I think, one more here from 1 Timothy, and it, it says this. Uh, we can go to the, that next slide. Um, at the end of the, the intro to 1 Timothy, it says, oh, go back one, please. The, thank you. The gospel, which means the good news of the glory of the blessed God. That's how that portion of the letter ends. There's a word that says blessed, you like, that doesn't mean happy. The word is uh, makarios. And when you translate it, it actually, in, from the Greek, it means um, pertaining to happiness. And one uh, Greek expert said super happiness. So here's how it really reads. The good news of the glory of the super happy God. Like the gospel, what I just shared with you, and the happiness of God are directly linked. You can only get in on this God of happiness by getting in on the message that I just shared with you. That although we fall short, Jesus never did, but chose to fall short in our place on a cross so that we could be forgiven and be made happy with this God. So as we end today, man, we're, we're just kind of saying, all right, man, that was, that was a lot about God, and it's always good when, when you're camping out on God. Like, that's always the best place to be. But, but maybe give me one thing. Give me one thing that I can do in response to all that you said. 
So some of you, man, we're going to have prayer guys, girls coming up here in just a second. Some of you can respond by being like, man, I've, I've never met that God. That's not the God that I know. It's not the God that I grew up with. And if you're saying that, that I, I, I need to go through Jesus to meet that God, is that what you're saying? Yes, that's what I'm saying. If you're saying that I need to surrender my life and begin to follow Jesus, believing he's this treasure that I've never met before, he's the way to the happy God. If that's what you're saying, I want that. Some of you need to respond simply. Just by come up and get and tell a prayer partner, I want that. You don't even know how to express it, maybe, but I want that. We'll pray over you, and we'll lead you through a prayer that's like, man, hey God, I'm surrendering to you. I want what you have. And if you come to him by faith, I promise you, this will begin to be more and more of your experience. Man, some of you know this, some of you know this, God, but you've kind of grown a little bit weary of, of life, and maybe you need a bit of reorientation. Here, here's what our author says, uh, Randy Alcorn says this, anyone who waits for happiness will never be happy. Anyone who waits for happiness will never be happy. Happiness escapes us, listen, until we understand why we should be happy, change our perspective, and develop habits of happiness. Habits of happiness. Well, what, man, what's a habit of happiness? What can I do this week that might increase my happiness? I mean, how do I get in on that? I understand maybe I need to come for the first time, but, but I've already come, man. And I can tell you, if you were to ask me, like, how, how am I expressing the happiness of God? I would say it's probably not super, super high. Well, here's, here's, where, we, here's where we end, okay? So uh, one habit that we can pursue this week, um, our, our, our friend C.S. Lewis writes about it like this, if you want to get warm, you've got to get next to the what? That's just simple, right? Like we're just trying to keep happiness simple. If you want to get warm, you've got to get next to the fire. If you want to get happy, you've got to get next to the source of happiness. All right, some of you are nodding your head. That's amping me up. That's actually increasing my happiness. Thank you over there. Now I'm going to try to hit my challenge before I give you your challenge. You ready? I'm going to cross step. Not even close. <laughs> and my shoulder will probably hurt. Should I try it again? Mm, nope. That's what they call warning track power. That's why I'm here, not playing the bigs. Okay. It's like about um, nearness. Nearness. So I'm gonna call the team up. We're gonna, we're gonna play our last song, and I'm gonna just kind of send you out with one habit of happiness for you to be thinking about and pursuing uh, this week. If it's about like getting near to the fire, right? It's about um, just real simple, like get around God. Just get around God this week. Like we're just gonna keep this as simple. If God is the ultimate fullness of happiness, then our greatest move this week, our greatest habit that we can begin to bring into our life is to get around God. Now here, I did a little math for you. That maybe, again, maybe that's too simplistic for you. Maybe for some of you it's a new thing. Here's the math I did. I found out that there are, um, Kristen, what was that number? Was it 10,080 minutes every week? Doesn't change. Dropping a little math on you. Some of you are going to get nervous. You're like, bring up Mitch to verify this. I'm not sure this one. 10,080 minutes every week. I don't know how much you want to increase your happiness. I'm just going to say, let's just increase where you currently are experiencing happiness by 1%. That'd be about 100 minutes. I just want to encourage you, for 100 minutes this week, not all together, but broken up into segments of 10 or 5 or 20 or 30, I mean, just 100 minutes minutes. Get around God. I'm not going to tell you what to do. If you're new and you don't know how to get around God, I'll, I'll make it really simple for you. 
was going to use my Bible. I'll just say, read your Bible. Read your Bible. Some of you know how to, like, you're new to this, like, what to get around God? Start in the Gospel of John, Gospel of Matthew, one, one, just, and, and begin to read for those 100 minutes and pray a little bit, things like that. For those of you who, man, you, you're in your word and you're, that's a regular thing for you, I'm going to say increase it. Whatever it is that you want me to do, increase it for a hundred minutes this week and do something, as Matt Chandler talks about, that just stir your affections for Jesus. Maybe it's reading more of your word, maybe it's not. Maybe it's listening to music, maybe it's just going out for a walk and talking with the Lord, maybe it's just watching the sunrise. Maybe it's eating like this amazing meal and receiving it with Thanksgiving and just like, man, I just spent 30 minutes and I just received this meal with great thanksgiving in my heart. And you know what, man? It was like the river of pleasure was flowing into me. And I knew who it came from. Yo, that, that counts. That counts. Whatever it will be that will stir your affections for Jesus. Do it. Get around the fire. Get around the fire. Because I can tell you this. We're probably not serious enough about our happiness. And there is a world that is desperately waiting for you to get more serious. Father, help us. Lord, we want to be happy, but that's not enough. Like, we've got to begin to participate in the habits of happiness. Lord, this week, as we commit to 1% of getting around you, whether it's in your word or through like worship or listening to a message or just eating or being with other believers and we're like saying, man, this is going to be a part of my 100 minutes and, and I'm going to be getting around you and I'm, I'm going to be intentional about thinking about you in this time. Father, whatever it is, I pray that when we come back in here next week, we would have market differences that because we gave you 1%, Father, you increased it by tenfold and we experienced joy and happiness and healing of our hearts that we experienced like a tenfold increase of happiness this week because we got around you and experienced the happy God. Help us in this. Father, I even pray now in this moment as we have our prayer partners here, Lord, that you would bring people forward who need prayer over different items, who need prayer over a reorientation of their heart maybe, but specifically, Father, I want to pray for people who want to encounter you for the first time through Jesus, that they would come and they just say, I want that, I want him, I want him, and they'd be prayed over, you would bring them to life through faith and repentance. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Let's sing together our final song. Okay, so real quick quiz as we go out of here. Who was the happiest human to ever live? Jesus. Jesus, awesome. So what? what yeah. Who was that? This is Iowa Chan Iowa. Let's give it up for Chan Iowa. You need to get around that lady. She's got something. Man, man Jesus, you know what he was doing? They'd be like, Where'd Jesus go? Oh, he snuck off. He's hanging out with his dad. He'll be back. He, he's, he's, he'd, be, he'd be like over here early in the morning. With the, there'd be all this stuff going on. I'd be like, where's, Jesus, where'd you? We're hungry, hurting. Where's Jesus? Oh, he's hanging out with his dad. Man, get around God. Man, get around God. Happiest human to ever live, die, and live again. His name's Jesus. Dude, he just got around his father all the time. I wonder what your 100 minutes is going to look like. We'd love to hear about it. Info at theavchurch.com. Take a picture of whatever it is that you might be doing. Shoot there. Let us know what you did for your 100 minutes. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now may the God of peace, joy, gladness of heart, and holiness, may he bless you. May he meet you in your Wednesday, in your Friday, in your Saturday. And may his river of delight undo you this week with inordinate amounts of his joy and happiness. 
Amen. Love you guys. We'll see you next week. Amen.